We are back with another case study. This one we're gonna be talking about treatment of mold and candida actively growing in a patient's gut. And we are gonna be sharing some of the labs. I got some really great feedback from you guys on the methane SIBO case study. A lot of people said, yep, this is good, keep making it. So here we are. My name's Todd Mansfield. I'm a clinical herbalist here in Byron Bay, Australia. And I do a lot of work with digestive health. I've started to use the organic acids test as a baseline test for a lot of chronically unwell patients. So this is a case study of a middle-aged woman who initially presented to me with a stool test, a complete microbiome mapping, um, showing that she had a candida overgrowth in her gut. So, you know, we got cracking on that, we got working on it. Um, she was dealing with uh, quite loose bowel movements. That was her big one. You know, significant loss of weight. We really needed to stabilize her and make some inroads. We had her on some liquid herbs back in the day. And she made huge progress, almost symptom resolved. And then something came up in her life. I think it was quite a significant stress in her life. And she found that symptoms flared and she went downhill pretty fast. So we ran the out test and I wanna show you what we found. We found, this is page one, and we're just gonna stick to page one for her because it's all mediated around infections for her. We've got number four, it's a furan 25 dicarboxylic acid, and this is a marker of aspergillus. All these furans, furoics, furan 25 furan carbonyl glycine, these are all markers of green mold actually growing in your gut, right? So don't confuse this with environmental exposure to mold. That might be part of the issue. She might have been exposed to mold sometime in her life, inhaled it, the spores you know, germinated, and now she's got green mold growing in her gut. But don't think, okay, look, just because we have green mold on the, on the, on the, on the oat test, that, that, that's showing that it's environmental. Not the case. It's in her gut, growing, active total deal killer this right here this is a smoking gun and this is what i've found this is bias this is my opinion i haven't found this in the literature i don't know how you'd study this but i find that if you test someone and they come back with a mold overgrowth in their digestive tract that is the first priority it might not be the first treatment you might have to stabilize them you might have to build them up in fact that's what we do we build that buffer between the patient and their symptoms so that we can actually go after the bug without them falling off a cliff lots of mold patients are extremely sensitive lots of them have mast cell activation and incredible histamine intolerance and systemic symptoms like headaches and sore lymph nodes and low immune system you know a really persistent sore throat that's a pretty common mold symptom could be something else that's why we test so this came back this was a surprise i, I hadn't clocked mold for her but it's, it's definitely something to you know really focus on and then number six, tartaric acid, you know, that they've got that marked down as aspergillus. It's my understanding that that, and even number seven, arabinose, can also be a candida marker as well. So, you know, I'm curious whether we had completely resolved her candida overgrowth in the first place. Symptoms had improved, we'd beat it back down. That also could be a green mold marker as well. So. We weren't actively treating green mold when she first came to me. We were just treating candida. Sometimes you can clear them both in one go. That's really the beauty of herbal medicine. Moving down a little bit, we've got the bacterial markers, hippuric acid. Um, you know, this is moderately elevated. I think an antibacterial program would be really helpful to kind of um, to add on. And DHPPA, so you know, generally a marker of beneficial bacteria. She had been on probiotics for a while, so I'm curious as to whether that's just picking up the, um, you know, the probiotics in her, uh, you know, in her gut. Um, might not be a problem. That's the point. Um, no Clostridia bacterial markers. That's good. Those can definitely impact your nervous system and your neurotransmitters. When they're elevated, they can um, you know, lead to uh, dopamine excess. 
um, and a difficulty converting dopamine into noradrenaline and adrenaline. Dopamine beta hydroxylase enzyme doesn't work so well with these clostridium markers. So let's talk a little bit about what we put her on. Let's talk about uh, how she went. She is pretty darn tolerant to everything. During this acute flare, she was having a lot of trouble with uh, active treatment, which was unusual for her. And so we said, look, let's go in gently. Symptoms aren't as extreme, you know, the, the, the kind of loose watery bowel movements, the extreme loss of weight, they, they weren't as kind of severe and acute as they were when she first presented. Um, where she tolerated liquid herbs, no problem. So there's, there's something else going on. And so my recommendations for her, based on these labs, I put her on a Horopido supplement. I love, love, love using Horopido in a liquid herb. That, that's where I find just so much value and pretty low-hanging fruit for fungal overgrowth. Um, if she was tolerant to liquid herbs, I would have built that out. I put her on a Saccharomyces boulardii combined with a bifidobacteria probiotic. Also recommended glutathione. There's a marker at the end of that out test that shows that she was under toxic load and her body was, was really pulling on that pathway saying, we need more glutathione. And that is a headline of mold. Even if it wasn't in her environment, if it's growing in her gut, it's still producing mycotoxins and the body's, yeah, we gotta get rid of this. How do you feel if we just give you more glutathione? Most patients feel great. There is always a subset, particularly of long-term, chronically unwell patients that do not feel good on glutathione. And we have to start very low or we have to build up some of those substrates a little bit higher up. Now, a huge piece right here, and everyone's going for N-acetylcysteine for you know, a variety of benefits, which I you know, agree with. But when there is mold exposure and when there are mycotoxins, the conversion of NAC, cysteine, right? N-acetylcysteine down into glutathione and glutathione recycling it gets inhibited. It doesn't, that enzyme that converts it doesn't work well. So if you have a moldy patient and you know, they're on NAC and they feel good, great. Um, I just jump straight to glutathione now, make sure they tolerate it, build it up to a therapeutic dose and then retest after three months to see where that glutathione marker is. The other really big one that I recommended for her was a soluble fiber, the product called Florigenics. It's by Integra Nutritionals. And I love, 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 love this product. I use a lot of it now. It does have PHGG in it, and it also has a few others, including green banana starch. So it's a, it's a form of re resistant starch. And that's really opening up those fermentation profiles and feeding different beneficial bacteria. When we're looking to kind of detox things out of the body, glutathione, essential if you can tolerate it, that's kind of mobilizing toxins and dumping them into the small bowel. And then we need something to kind of sweep it out the bowels. Better bowel movements, always, always, always. If someone's constipated, they can't detoxify. Their main channel of detox is, is not happening and you just have to get them pooping before you can put them on a detox program. So let's have a little look at the follow-up. When we did retest it, we see pretty significant moves in the right direction. Number four, totally, totally resolved. The other huge, huge, huge piece that she saw here, number six, tartaric acid. You know, this was three times the upper limit, maybe a bit more, and again, totally normalized, fantastic. And look, you know, a little bit of an imbalance on the, um, on the clostridia side of things, but you know, upper limit's 19, that's 21. When, uh, when these are excessive, you can see a lot of kind of mood disturbances, a lot of um, nervous system disturbances. She was feeling so much better. She'd moved through that acute stressor of her life. We worked on some pretty fundamental pieces, targeted probiotics targeted fibers, glutathione, 
and Horopedo work the system, retest, symptom resolution, and confirmation on the labs as well.